Hello, hey, and welcome to this duet episode of Rushed Vibes. It's just us, the original, 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 <laughs> original, the original Rushed Vibers, Mr. and Mrs. Rushed Vibes in the flesh, in the audio and video. Oh, so what's up, everybody? It's still Mompreneur March. We don't have a mompreneur with us. <laughs> well, we do. We do. Do you we consider do. me a mompreneur? I do. I'm so glad you said this because I was waiting to the last episode of the month to throw, to open the Pandora's box of petty. <laughs> So you don't have a whole mom for doing my you know, I, I, my That's we actually my exactly how I was going to do it. We yeah, do yeah, yeah. all these guests and you don't see me as a mompreneur. And you know, I have <laughs> You know, it's funny because <laughs> but I that's have growth. I didn't say anything. I have desperately tried to get Jessica to pursue entrepreneurship as long as we've been together. She's like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna. So the irony and you having the audacity, <laughs> the gall. To try to to plan to call me out on the last episode. See, God don't like ugly. Welcome everyone <laughs> to Rush Vibes. As Jessica said, it, we're still a mompreneur march, but uh, there's a lot going on. There so is. we wanted to uh, interrupt our regularly, regularly scheduled, scheduled <laughs> programming to bring you not a special episode of Rush Vibes, but a normal episode. Of Rush Vibes. Uh, while I have your attention, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And when you get to the point where you're ready to check out, make sure you hit the like button before you bounce. If you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify or Google or whatever, tune in. Um, be sure to uh, leave a five star rating and leave a review if you'd be so kind, because um, that helps us show up when other people are searching for dope podcast to listen to so go and ahead share hit that like. it with a friend yeah share with a friend or a family member um but yeah go ahead hit that like button if you uh if you haven't already who it's march it's march it's actually can we date can we date today sure today is the 13th of march and for me the 13th of march is the day the world officially shut down yeah so if you are watching a lot of television shows and reading a lot of news columns. A lot of people have picked a day uh, this week to say that it was this moment last year where we realized life would never be the same. But we didn't. <laughs> and we didn't. Like it, we thought there were, there's a meme circulating that said, well, we really thought we were just going to be home for three weeks <laughs> and be back so in the cute. office. Was it three? I thought it was two. Two, three, I think. It's or was it? No, it was still Easter. Our Easter, yeah. The 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 previous person who Oh yeah, that's when it was uh it was gonna be gone. It's gonna, gonna be it's gonna be gone by <laughs> April. <laughs> you guys see how long it's been since it's we've had a gone. Trump impression? <laughs> it's gonna be gone. <laughs> I knew yeah, they weren't just, going away. It's just one person. But yeah, March thirteenth one person from China. Is when I re- when it really Wuhan, hit me. It was Wuhan a virus. It was a Friday and I believe that's when CMS, which is Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools canceled and that school. was when the the dad was spraying his son in the face with, with Lysol. <laughs> and yo do y'all understand how far we have come now granted fauci talking about doubling up on your mask and that's kind of didn't he tri- didn't he get to triple at one that's, point i don't know i stopped paying attention but <laughs> we really have gone from don't touch anything <laughs> oh spray your son with Lysol on his six face six feet away six feet away to vaccines and, you know, being able to see your grandchildren, have, again. See grandchildren and have people in your home as long as you're wearing masks. You know, mandates have have been relaxed. Stipulations and regulations have been relaxed. Texas is just wide ass open. <laughs> just <laughs> look, te- it's wide ass. Texas open. and Atlanta. <laughs> Texas like, yo, we open y'all. Come on. C- come through. If you're not happy in your state, come to Texas. Come to Texas. We got no mask rules for um, you. But yeah, just just looking back and and now what's interesting is I check my Facebook memories every single morning. So from like this point forward, it's just going to be amazing to see the kind of stuff that we were thinking about, yeah. thinking was real, thinking was a hoax. Like just all of the content that happened over this last year is going to be very interesting to go back and go back and look at. And um, 
Whew. Man, it's been a year. And you know what's crazy is uh, I don't know. Gosh, it's, I feel kind of embarrassed. I don't know when our first episode was. It wasn't in March, but our first um, aired episode. First or aired, it first was like late in the year, right? It was like October, it was December. December. I yes, think we, it was December. We got a ways to go, but we were planning it at this point. And um, we actually did that one epic Facebook Live where we were outside. Oh yeah, with the baby oh, when the, she was baby. a baby. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Maybe we should do some live, just random sporadic, rushed vibes live facebook lives i think that would be that could be interesting fun. i wonder who would show up but um, back if to you my- if you would like to show up or if you'd be willing to show up for a live youtube or facebook live rush vibes go ahead and you know drop a put a thumbs up or a thumbs down in the comments if you've, if you've made it this far i'm sorry i've interrupted you a couple of times go ahead you had i was just picking at your your locks but the reason why march 13th is the day for me is because that is when New York City schools went into lockdown. Now, if you're from the Northeast, you understand that New York shuts down. Actually, if you're just if you're in the world, you understand New York shuts down for nothing. There's snow. It can be a 27 inch nor'easter. They will put chains on the bus tires. Them kids are going to school. Like there's New York does not shut down. Ever. And when New York shut down, that's when I thought, okay, this is um, this is potentially something serious. This is this is serious. I remember being so disappointed because there was a Yelp event where you could bring a plus one that wasn't yeah. a Yelp member, and it happened to be David was on maternity paternity leave, so he could go this time because he missed the wing the wing um, the wing fest that we had. So I was like, yes. We get to go, and then they canceled it in San Francisco because they were getting the num- their numbers were starting to jump up, and I was so disappointed. But yeah, to look back on an entire year and see where we were and where we are now, it's there's definitely progress. Yeah, but it's still like I'm trying to go back to my past self and remember like I, that week my cousins had happened to david surprised me he brought them down for my birthday shout out to esquire and uh, loretta esquire and masters and, and matt who masters oh masters excuse me put some respect masters on who name. went viral this past week she did go viral but we can address that later <laughs> yeah. uh we'll actually tie that into a topic later so they had come down and i think their flights down were kind of empty um, but their flights back to New York were, I, I think they were like, there's like four people on the plane. Nobody was on, and they were both on different airlines, different flights yeah. and their planes were like, they had entire row, not just like the three seat, the entire row to themselves. So I, I think it was, it was at that point where it was like, okay, this, this is, um, this is interesting. Yeah. Now if we could pull a share and turn back time. Maybe I would have just stayed home for three <laughs> till Easter yeah. and we could have avoided a whole lost year. But this is another episode. This is another another yeah, episode. Just, I'm not ready to get into all that right no, now. It's just it's a too shame. emotional for me. Because, you know, I just thought it was one person, <laughs> one person coming from China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, and totally gone by April. And then poor Fauci. I was thinking about him. I know we're not supposed to be I thought he was talking. Tony. He is Tony. And you know what? Somebody was, they were, they, NPR did an interview with him and another doctor. And the doctor was like, oh, hey, Tony. And I was like, people actually call him Tony. Like, he's not yeah, Trump, Anthony Trump Fauci. Called him Tony. Uh, Trump shouldn't call like, him Tony. Like, we would have to call him Almighty Merciful Doctor. No, no. But it, da- it dawned on me when we were thinking, when people were talking about how, like, he had his glow back now that Biden was president and everything. And Fauci's like, what, late 70s? Yeah, mid, mid to late here. Do you realize that this man was being put through so much stress and toxicity? One, why isn't he retired? Like he should be living his best life in like Nantucket. But he was he. I, it just seemed crazy. Like when it dawned the, on me how old Fauci because is. He's not the doctor we deserve, <laughs> but the one we needed at the I'm time. Done. I'm finished. I'm what are you? What are we drinking? Because we have the same. We are tonight. drinking. Well, you're just drinking red wine. I put a splash of pineapple wine in mine, um, pineapple just pineapple. To, to lighten it up. But yeah, splash. Aldi has an amazing wine selection. If you're on a budget, uh, I happen to be. And we are always on a budget. Yes, I happen to be in all the Aldi groups, the black ones and the non-black ones. Um, 
and I follow all the pages on Instagram, so I'm always seeing the, the things to get from Aldi as long along with Trader Joe's, and they're actually brother companies estranged brother companies but we can get into the history of that later um so yeah we're just there's a, a wine that was really popular uh it was cheap not it, it was it was moderately priced i think it was like 7.99 or 6.99 right. um so it's just a red it's a red red wine blend and it's really it's really sessionable so sure. i figure we switch it up more was doing cocktails let's let's get some red red wine if y'all know about ub40 you might not i was raised on that stuff anyway that's it. We should have mentioned this at the beginning. Our main, we're going to get, we're, our, our main topic, uh, the meat and potatoes of our conversation is going to be the, uh, the fallout from, from the uh, interview that uh, Harry and, and Meghan Markle gave to, uh, had with, with Oprah. So that's going to be coming up after our, our first break. We've got about eight minutes. Um, and I'm going to dramatically shift gears here. Oh and for anyone who can who's watching on YouTube. If you see my shirt, you probably can't make it out too. Well. I may zoom in, um, and, and post-production, but, uh, this is a picture of one of the many, uh, protests and rallies that w- that took place here in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, over last summer. Um, I partook in a handful of those. I was not at this one specifically, but, um, uh, 704 shop, I believe is their name on Instagram is a local, uh, is a local brand. And they, uh, they, they were selling these. So I went ahead and bought one. um, Obviously, a lot of those protests took place because of a lot of the uh, unjust murders that happened this summer. Ahmaud Arbery, uh, Breonna Taylor, and then, of course, uh, the one that was probably the most publicized was George Floyd. And happy to announce, he's still bittersweet, but his family was awarded $27 million by the city of Minneapolis. Minneapolis? Minneapolis, yes, excuse me. Um, So while no dollar amount can ever replace on his life, it, it is good to see some sort of justice being done. Now we, we await the trial of the uh, officer. <clears throat> so I, I bring that up because um, a lot of these things are, are are sequential, right? Like Colin Kaepernick started kneeling a couple of years ago because of the way uh, black people are treated. Mainly, his I think the thing he called out was uh, in, in terms of their interactions with police. But if you look at it on a broader scope, it's just in general in this in this country. And if you look at the history, um, a lot of things are are uh, are still happening. And the um, racist statements within the national anthem. Look at the second stanza. Yeah, and so a lot of athletes have have decided to. He started nailing, and then a lot of people uh, started doing it, and it's still going on today. And more more recently, there was a high school basketball game i believe it was in oklahoma where a girls basketball team uh was kneeling during the anthem now i'm a little new to to high school sports being streamed over the internet that's not that wasn't a thing when i was in high school i wish it was um could have saved me some trips and some gas money but uh there was a back in my day we <laughs> there had was to a drive there was a basketball there was a basketball announcer who um did not realize his mic was still on. I believe they went to a commercial break or, or a break or whatever. Maybe they were pausing for the national anthem and saw that the other girl, that the girls basketball team was kneeling mm-hmm. and uh, hurled some uh, racial pleasantries, <laughs> racist insults. Um, now, this is an adult show. This is probably the only time you'll ever hear me use this kind of vulgar language, but I'm going to quote Matt Rowan where he referred to the girls' basketball team as Hard R. Hard R. And he did not realize that his mic was on. And it was. And so he was found out by everybody. And so, of course, it went on Twitter. It blew up. And um, he basically outed himself as a racist. And... uh, Plot thickens. (laughs) This is where it gets good. Now, you would probably, like, David, like, you just, you got all serious and deep. Why are you saying this is where it gets good? Why are you smiling right now? Because as everybody does, when they're outed as being a racist, they he, they release a statement um, issuing an apology where Matt Rowan, a former youth pastor, Hallelujah. said that he is a type 1 di- diabetic. In Jesus' name. And his blood sugar was spiking. Therefore, he acted irrationally and um, out of character. So he literally blamed his racism 
on diabetes. Now that's new and that's very rich. And that is hilarious to me. Um, that when people get, when they get outed for the racism, they, they reach and they cling to whatever they can to make themselves seem less racist. Blame it on the least racist. The least racist. Um, but in all seriousness, when people uh, are confused as to why, as to why uh, we're still striving, where when people talk about systemic racism um, and talk about why it's important, why representation matters, um, and why we need to have conversations about race, it's because of people like Matt Rowan who are walking among our kids, kids in church. In church, nonetheless, but in, in, in high school um, and having influence over them um, with that kind of hatred in their hearts. So this is why it always needs to be about race for anyone who is confused. This, this is why, because you got people like this in high schools. Teaching our children. Teaching our children. We're trusting with, our children. With, with, with that kind of hate on their hearts. So if, if you're ever confused, just Google Matt Rowan and, and, and you'll know why race is, is such a big deal. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping, Jess, because maybe we don't have. I do not have. Um, maybe we don't have a race problem. We have. We have. A, Can you, you want to do it? Can you do it? We don't have a race problem, America. We have a heart problem. We need to love. We people. need to love people. We don't have a race problem in Jesus' name. I don't name. care if y'all black or white, blue or gray. We, we just need to love. Love one another. It's bullshit. <laughs> we got a Whoa, race problem. We do have a race problem, and, and it needs to be addressed. I don't addressed. know. Van Lathan said this. For anyone who hasn't listened to the Higher Learning uh, podcast with Van Lathan and Rachel Lindsay, it's fantastic. Uh, download it. Uh, anywhere on your major podcast platforms, but he went on another podcast <clears throat> and was saying, it's interesting that any other problem that we have in this country, we throw attention at breast cancer. Um, well, uh, women's rights, right? Mm -hmm. uh, any uh, uh, wage inequality, wealth inequality, access to health care, food, right? Any problem that we have, we discuss it yes. at, we discuss it till, so we're tired of discussing it, and then we wake up and discuss it some more. But for some reason, racism is the only problem that we don't, if we just ignore it, <laughs> it ceases to exist. It's the one thing we don't have to touch in this country, and that's just like the magic cure. And I, I know why it is, um, and I don't want to get too, too explosive on this, so I'll, I'll, I'll pin it maybe for later. But I know exactly why it is. But it basically, it has to do with certain people being uncomfortable with realizing that, yes, it is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And yes, maybe they have some subconscious tendencies. Oh, it's not subconscious. Some, I mean, some people are, are genuine, but they don't realize that, that they have it. Um, and also, it's just some people just refusing to be uncomfortable. And it's an uncomfortable uh, topic. It's an uncomfortable conversation, whatever it needs to be had, but it is one that needs to be had, mm -hmm. as evidenced by protests needing to be had over unjust killings and also... You know, high school bas basketball announcers wilding out like Mr. Matt Rowan. So that's my piece on it. Um, we did want to, we did want to discuss it because it's you know it's. But did we discuss it? I think you just. I don't gave, know. I think you I just, just gave. You just went on your. your, your I think I did. I'm sorry. I was trying to like. I, I knew you want to get it, but we got to take a break. Do you want? Do you want to? I can do, after okay. the break. After we'll we'll be right back, and then uh, Jess will she'll say her piece too. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. We're back. So I, uh, I, I David walked, hijacked I, the I walk, bus. I walked around outside to calm down. So I'm, I'm going to be quiet and let Jessica say her piece. No, I, I mean, it's supposed to be a dialogue. I just, oh, I'm sorry. like every time I got like ready to, to it's like when you're trying to, to get into like merge lane, like you're trying uh, to merge like over. When you're trying to get into the double Dutch. And you're like, look, that's actually me. So to this day, I don't know how to double Dutch because I'd always be like, okay. And then, you know, you do the, like the free jump where you like get yourself ready and then, Nope, not yet. So um, we touched on two things. So first you addressed um, George Floyd and the $27 million settlement, which is the largest settlement in uh, Minneapolis um, wrongful death suit history. So the previous was $20 million for the police officer of Ethiopian descent who 
wrongfully killed the Caucasian woman who called in the police and said that she thought someone was being assaulted outside of her house or near her apartment or something like that. So and that case is a whole nother conversation that um, also ties into race, but we won't address that just yet. Um, my, I'm sure some people are upset. Uh, I happen to be driving today, so I got to listen to NPR, and they were they were talking about the the settlement. And one lawyer broke it down, and it really sat with me. And it kind of ties into reparations and all of that stuff. So twenty, so you like David said, you cannot put a dollar amount to the cost of life. Um, the that twenty seven million dollars. I'm pretty sure his brother even said that they they would trade it to have him back. So the dollar, it 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 doesn't do it. It doesn't give that little girl her father back. It doesn't you know give that family their son, brother, cousin, nephew back. Um, but what it for me what it says is we're finally putting an adequate and i don't even know if this is the appropriate term so you might have to be my backup and see where i'm going with this um it it kind of puts in <laughs> it, it, it it to me it puts an adequate amount to injustice towards a black a black individual in America. Um, Not justifying it, not saying that it's okay to kill black people and just give them $27 million. But I think because the history of America is so delicate and ugly and um, America never really... Forget, I'm trying to like make this tasteful. America never made amends for slavery. It never made amends for Jim Crow. It never made amends for anything that it did post antebellum age, freeing the slave, emancipation proclamation, all of the things that have these long syllable titles. And in my opinion, strictly my opinion, you can say your little disclaimer, the views of Jessica are rush vibes, whatever you will say. The views of Jessica are not indicative they indicative of Rush Vibes. <laughs> no, the complete views of us here at Rush Vibe Studios. Black lives have not cost America enough. And I think if reparations had been paid out, if, you know, a, a Lincoln hadn't been assassinated and the 40 acres and a mule had been distributed, uh, and America at, had to finance, because America is a capitalist country. This country is built and its backbone is developed on money how can we make more money how can we be rich so if something doesn't cost america or hurt america financially they don't value it and black lives have not hurt america financially so until we get to the point that black lives hurt america financially america will not have a a a value for us that's how america sees that that's just how things work in America. I believe, and and I'm not going to go too deep into it because the history is fuzzy for me. But when the ja- the reason why the Japanese during world after World War II they were put in concentration camps essentially in America, they the relationship with Japan was was stifled because of that. And America recognized that they they had a need a financial need from Japan, so they paid reparations to the Japanese because of what they did in world war ii and for that the jap like that cost to them gave the japanese value they were like oh man we are going to lose something so we need to pay to make up for it so i think this tw- this this 23 million really needs to open people's eyes and make 27 them, excuse me forgive me 27 millions really million dollars needs to make people american policymakers, government recognize that it's time to invest now now i if they had done this years ago it wouldn't have cost so much there are a lot more of us black folks in america now so but however y'all decide to do reparations it's gonna cost but until we get to the point where and i hate i hate to say it like this a monetary value goes towards black life we are i feel like we are not going to be given justice and appreciated the way we deserve to be as those who this country was built on. 
again, this is just my opinion, but I, I feel like the facts are there in terms of when something costs, when something is expensive to America, they make sure that it has value. And we, you know, they we went from the Emancipation Proclamation, free the slaves, but the Southern blacks were still able to turn freed blacks into, uh, into sharecroppers. So you're still working for pennies on the dollar for your previous master. You're not able to, I mean, I have, I studied, I took a course on the American South and you had, some people legitimately had to run during the great migration. If they wanted to move to a New York, Chicago, California, they needed to sneak out because white people were preventing them from leaving because they were still enslaved essentially. So it, they, it, it didn't, it, it wasn't a cost to them. Black life wasn't a cost to them. And to this day, black life still isn't a cost to them. So until we, they see us as, as expensive, it is costly. And one of the examples that the gentleman said, he said, now when mayors, governors, legislatures are making laws, that's $27 million they're going to think about about when it comes to no-knock warrants. Is, is not having a no-knock warrant worth $27 million? Is not having a police officer have his body cam on worth $27 million? And it's sad that it has to be put in that perspective, but that's what it boils down to. How much is this going to cost you in the long term to give us respect, to give us justice, to see us as the equals which we are? Whew. There was a second thing we discussed. Was there? <laughs> there was. It, you you talked about. Oh yes, racist coach. He was a he was a basketball announcer. Oh, even better, racist announcer, youth yeah, pastor yeah. by Sunday, racist basketball announcer Monday through Saturday. Nah, he was just he is who he is every day. He is, week. and at this point. And maybe it's the 31 vibes that I'm dealing with. Did y'all know it's been my birthday? 30 plus one. I turned 30 plus one on March 2nd. Um, cash app, dollar sign, J and rushing. If you feel like adding to my, uh, to, my <laughs> to my birthday celebration, it's been great. But I think I'm trying to get into a mindset of I don't care. I want to say what I, I'm thinking um, and I want you to be frank as well. Cause I feel like so many people wait till they're old and it's like, you can't do anything to an old person to be blunt. Um, but I want to live in that now. So at 31, I'm saying this, I can't stand the fact that he blamed his type two diabetes type one. Oh, excuse me. Let me clarify. Cause you know, you know, if it was type two, maybe I would, maybe I would stand with him on this. He I'm blamed his, he blamed his one. diabetes type one, two, whatever type it was. He blamed his diabetes. If he had just owned it and said yes i inf i said this it got caught on the mic i didn't intend for it to be caught on the mic it has nothing to do with my blood sugar i do have racist tendencies i would have more respect for him than for him trying to say that it was because of his blood sugar or his in like if you have diabetes you you need people who have diabetes are very responsible for their insulin levels, their blood, all of that good stuff. So I'm not even going to buy, I'm not buying that. It's a, it's a nice try, sir. Nice try. I appreciate he's, the effort. He's just trying to get, he's trying to get that Snickers endorsement. A, a for effort. <laughs> it's not himself when he's hungry. We need to get to a place where, you know, we stop denying it and just own it. Just own, because the, the foundation of this nation is on racism. I hate to say it like that. No, I don't hate to say it like that. I'm saying it like that. The foundation of this country is on racism. You steal people's land, native people. You bring people to, to take care of it uh, for free, Africans. Uh, and, and then everybody else who joins later on, once you open your borders, you put them in discriminant categories. And if they can't pass, then they are less than. So... Racism is the core of America. And like you said, if it's not something that we just we actually address and we try to beat around, we're never going to get past this. Our children, our five year old and one year old are going to be dealing with this. And this is absolutely outrageous to me. Like, it's not something that they still need to be dealing with. Race it like we this we need to just straight up he needs to straight up be like yeah uh, I have biases I have um, opinions that are racist and I don't appreciate black people kneeling at the national anthem 
all right, Ron, now let's have a dialogue. But don't scapegoat your diabetes. His name is Matt. His name is Matt? Matt. So who's Ron? I don't know. What was his last name? Ro- Rowan. Rowan. Oh, maybe his middle name is Ronald. Most. Next, but, well, anyway. No. Um, if we don't start having the uncomfortable conversation and making everyone uncomfortable and stop scapegoating random things like diabetes like poor diabetes is minding its own business messing with people's insulin and, and sugar levels and now you're gonna make it it's, it's diabetes fault that you're racist no like you probably were well into adulthood before you developed diabetes so that like that's something that's already in here it's in you it's in your dna so let's just get to it at the root problem you don't appreciate black people using their amendment right to have an opinion, essentially, because it, it differs from your superiority complex that you may not realize you manifest, but you manifest it because you are white. And this is a country that was designed to lift your race. Now, there are some woke white people. And for you, I appreciate you. And a lot of us appreciate you. And there are some woke undercover ones of you. Who you act woke, but you know, when the doors close, you watch Watchmen. He had that whole closet with KKK gear, but he loved, yeah, that's another, that's another conversation for another episode. Anyway, we need to stop, like you, like you said, Van said, like others have said, beating around the bush. Let's address it. The issue is race. You are uncomfortable with my race recognizing that we deserve better and speaking against it and using whatever means or platform to make you uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable. Why are you uncomfortable? Figure out why you're uncomfortable and then we can solve the problem. But as long as you want to deny it and push it on something else and like real talk, he needs to find a PR person. Like, I don't know who told him that using your diabetes is the most reasonable, that we would all go, oh, like, it's not being hangry. Like, you, like I don't care if you're hungry and you just start dropping end bombs at people. At, like, that doesn't, that's not how this works. That's not like what comes out of you comes out of you. And your, your, your state of health has nothing to do with it. You have racist tendencies. Let us let it out. Say it and let's address it. Let's be uncomfortable. All right, I'm done. I just needed to I needed to get that off of my chest. Thank you for your listening audience. Oh, it's kind of funny. Um <clears throat> you talk about blaming uh your racism on on things. Uh it reminds me of a uh there was a Charlotte Hornets uh, <laughs> media person. I think he was a journal- columnist or, or a journalist or whatever. Covered the Hornets beat. Um, they were playing a uh, preseason game, I believe. It was just, just recently, this year, last year. And um, he was tweeting a comment about, about the game. The Hornets were playing the Nuggets. And he was tweeting from an iPhone. And you know, what's interesting uh, about the iPhone is that if you use... It, you know, all these phones and technology these days, they have machine learning, so they, they adapt to how you use the device. So one of the things about the iPhone is that if you use a word a lot, it, it becomes part of the, the iPhone's dictionary. So it, it, it tries to suggest or, or try to suggest the word if you've misspelled another word that's similar to it. Like, oh, no, you meant this. So um, he was... <laughs> Tell he us, was David. he was he was putting a tweet out about something that had happened in the game. So he was basically saying, "Blah blah 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 is happening at the Hornets." He meant to say, "I'm imagining he meant to type Hornets Nuggets game," but it actually autocorrected to Hornets. <laughs> and what's what's hilarious about it? Not that that's hilarious, but is that it was in all caps. <laughs> so whenever he was using it in his group chats or or group me or whatever he was doing. Um, he was, <laughs> he was using all caps when he was, he was using the word. And then of course he was like, I don't know how the word got in there. Like, bro, we know exactly how the word like got that, in there. That word is, is not in my phone. Right. Like it would not, it would not <laughs> auto. I have an iPhone. You have an iPhone. It would not access. Yo, I could type nuggets right now and it would not. Like the iPhone changes the F word to ducking. 
<laughs> like, who's ducking? No one's ducking. It changes and to abs. Yeah, like we 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 see you, bro. Like you going. So I, I think he was. It was it he was, was a nice he try. Was, he was, but like, he was he, let go. So stop um, scapegoating it. Like yeah. But then it goes to another. Like who in his circle is he comfortable enough? That he can send it and send it in caps. So that's another thing in terms All of caps with the, diversifying with the R. your circle. And if you as R. R. a white person have a fellow white brethren who is <laughs> communicating with you and using this type of language, that's that's it's literally your responsibility to be like, yo, dude, because that's how you I feel like that's how you guys all talk to each other. Dude, man, this is not okay. Like you, you need, you like, you need to call it out because it is uncomfortable. There are things that, you know, you're, you're supposed to call out, you know, when someone is inappropriate sexually if with you someone, see something, say something, say something. So that's, that's my two cents. So Kyle, cause I feel like whoever he was messaging his name, Kyle, um, who is in like some five okay. chapter of five, Sigma something something with the short the Bermuda khaki shorts and the polo. Jessica, and, sorry, this is when when this is just what I imagine is happening in in the frat houses. You can't allow where, if it makes you uncomfortable. This is not something you need to be saying in public. You shouldn't be typing it. You shouldn't be using it. It's not okay. All right, so um, we're gonna move away from from this. No, we're not actually. To we're going to end up circling to, to this something, um, in a different form. Something much more controversial, actually. <laughs> Didn't realize this was going to be such a heavy episode of Rush Vibes. Um, I may, have to, put, I may have to put a disclaimer in the uh, heavy. and all the, uh, the promotions this week. But yeah, so how about that that uh, pr- uh, form, former Prince Harry and, and Duchess of... Sussex, David Sussex. Uh, interview with uh, the one and only Oprah. Harpo. Oprah. Harpo. Interesting. Um, what was your What was your reaction to the to the interview? Where do I begin? Um, you got eight minutes. I can never. I can't react to. Anything yeah. Well, you took minutes. freaking fifteen minutes in your and your diatribe of, of your anti racism. I was, you know, I was. You know, addressing. I took like eight minutes, and you were I like, addre- "Oh, I need, I need to get my I piece in." I was addressing in. diabetes, and, you took half, and, and it's not more than half that the diabetes was scapegoated. Anyway, what do I feel? I feel like this in t- that interview. I do, I do admit that I do believe that there were some honest moments. I also feel that every response was calculated. Every everything brought up, and and I. I say this, I've seen many, first of all, my first disclaimer, I've seen a lot of memes, tweets, pictures where it's like a billionaire and two millionaires talking about their life struggles um, and how life is so difficult for them. And what I, I think is very, very important, it does not matter your income bracket. You have problems. We all have problems. Uh, that's why they say money cannot buy happiness because even the richest people are still miserable. So it doesn't necessarily, money makes it easier to get to happiness let me ask somebody um, i'd be the happiest dude in the world you won't be lived. the happiest dude because you're still the, the thing is people still want fulfillment like it's not all about i'll be money. fulfilled by being but rich what i will say <laughs> and, and you even say it too like when you tried to come for the amount of shoes i have and we were talking about cardi b's bags i didn't so, try i did anyway I uh, a lot of those shoes were given to me because i just happened to have a foot size that's similar to other people size nine if you, you, you want to share anything more than, more than what um you need. anyway i'm speaking I'm vibing right now. Trying to do the bit. I will say that we need to we need to stop looking at it from that perspective because one, all Harry has ever known is the wealth of being Prince of England. So that's that that that's his. We need to respect people's bubbles. This is the bubble that he grew up in. He grew up in the limelight. He grew up in the monarch. This is this is his role. So. All of this situation is uncomfortable for him. This is a problem for him. I've dealt with family disconnecting, and so I, I, I can relate to him on that capacity. But people just need to stop saying, like, oh, these rich people talking to other rich people about their problems because everyone in some degree, form, or fashion 
has a problem. Second that, I do think this was a very calculated interview. I don't think there was any malice towards it. I think everything that was brought up and addressed was true. I do think that they were concerned about the color of Archie's skin, which makes no sense because Megan Hurst, like, if you didn't, let's just do some algebra. Y equals MX plus B. I'm checking out. Y equals Megan already light skinned equals Megan's already light skinned and Harry is white, redhead white. Meaning Archie doesn't have a choice, but like, I don't know why they thought Archie was going to be this color. It would have been great for the monarch if he was, but I mean, I, if that, that was a topic of conversation, that was ridiculous. And y'all are just doing the most. Um, they treated him like Quasimodo. They really did. The and he's tower. adorable. <laughs> he's really adorable. But um, Banished. That, it, it's just insane to me. It's No, you know what? It makes sense. Because the English people are mean. Like, I'm sorry. You guys are mean. To so all of our um, listeners across the pond. The views expressed by Jessica <laughs> do not but represent. But they know they're mean. The way they insult each other, like the like, and but it's amazing. I still want to go to London. I still want to experience fish and chips in London. Uh, I want to go to some other cities too in England because I think London, in my mind, is the only place in England that you go. There's England and then there's London and there's no other places. So I watch English TV and realize like there are there's like it's like America where there are suburbs and towns and and other places like. It, anyway, so the English tabloids are mean. I mean, American tabloids are mean, but the English, like when it comes to the shade and petty, you guys take it to a whole nother level. It's impressive. Um, so I, I think a lot of people are disappointed. And of course, the, the, the castle, what's it, Buckingham Palace, they're trying to clap back, um, which is it's a nice attempt. Let it be known that Buckingham Palace was bought for Queen um, Elizabeth by her husband, King George. Queen Elizabeth, who was technically of Moorish descent. So she had black in her. So um, y'all already living in a black person's house. So let's just put that out there. Um, so, and we can do a history lesson later if David will let us extend this episode. So I, it's definitely troubling, but I can't say that Wrong. anything... I've heard is surprising. It's disappointing um, what Megan is claiming she went through and it's hurtful. And I do think that it's harmful that anyone would say she is lying because these are some extreme things to lie about. And I feel if she really wanted to gain sympathy, she could go a different route. Um, I do think she genuinely went through, through all of the things she went through, the depression, the, you know, questioning why she should like wanting to take her life and all of that it's it's intense um but i do think even her getting to buckingham palace was calculated um not again not maliciously but i th as a woman as a human being if you want to get somewhere if you try hard enough you can put the right pieces and get yourself around the right people to get to where you want to be um if how is it how is it, it how is it calculated if they didn't know what questions Oprah was going to ask before? Well, I mean, she brought up some things. Like she brought up she brought up the the topic of Archie's skin color, um, the questioning of that. That wasn't a question Oprah asked because remember she was like, "What?" Oprah didn't straight up be like, "So was anyone concerned about his color?" Like she 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 suggested it, which led into the the conversation. So again, I don't say any of this is malicious. They do have a livelihood. Like now they have a second child to to provide for. The world is uh is getting ready to open up. She needs to rebuild. She needs to rebuild her brand here in America. She needs to gain American sympathy, which she already had. Um, but she she has. I think from a PR perspective, a PR marketing perspective, all the timing of this, the responses, the statements, it, it's definitely setting up for her to rebuild her career to make sure that they have a, a flow of, of income. They've, they've been, Harry's been cut off from his financial source. He's never really had to work his entire life. Yes, he's been, I think he's, he's in the, he was, uh, he was stripped of his titles, but he was in the military. Um, 
as is his brother, but that is required as a, a working member of the royal family. But in terms of, like, he addressed his security has been taken away. So they need to make sure they have a stream of money coming in. Meghan Markle on suits income is not enough to support the security team required to defend to, to protect a prince and though he they're no they no longer have their titles he's still prince harry so sure. you still need to have a certain caliber of security for a prince so i think all of this is we're, we're placing the easter eggs all the different chess pieces down so that we can ensure that we create a stream of revenue elsewhere to provide for our livelihood and the life that we have become accustomed to Okay, let's, uh, let's take a break and then we'll we'll finish up on the... Uh, take a break. Run away with... Sorry, Hamilton, because we were talking about King George. We'll be back. All right, we're back. Um, I told Jessica she can't talk for like two minutes. <laughs> you need to let the oxygen get back into her, into her brain. Um, I would, I would agree to a degree that um, it was calculated because of course it was. They scheduled the interview. Of course it was calculated. They wanted to, I guess they were tired of all the tabloid stories uh, and all the rumors and just wanted an opportunity to set the record straight, which, you know, I think that it was their right. I mean, they're no longer part of the royal family, so I, it's, well, they're still part of it, but they're they're estranged. Um, so it's, it's, easier for them to to do it as unless they were still you know uh, um as opposed to them if they were still serving in their roles um i thought the i thought the interview was you know, i was kind of in and out we watched it on the couch together i think i took a nap <laughs> in the middle of it and not on purpose i just fell asleep um but it you know it's um it, i can understand how some people would be like oh it's rich people problems like ooh boo hoo like somebody doesn't like you um you know, turns out old British white people are potentially racist. <laughs> like, oh, shocker. Um, but yeah, I think that there's a there's a bigger there's a bigger theme here uh, that we all need to be aware of, um, and it, it is that a woman um, of color, no matter how light that color may be, she's still a woman of color, um, is being harassed essentially by her in-laws and to the point where she contemplated suicide. Um, and I think that, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, believe women, uh, protect women, uh, you know, treat women equally and, and fairly. Uh, I think this is like, this is like the epitome of, of that, of, of that, that movement. So, um, you know, I, I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about the Royal family and all that. Jessica is my, she's my, uh, she's my go-to when, whenever I, I didn't even know what Megan's, uh, old former title was. Um, so I, I don't know a lot of the, the history and, and, and things behind it, but I, I do know that it's, it's a machine, um, and look no further than, than Princess Diana. So, you know, I, I, I believe you know, everybody's going to tell a story that so that it that it, it they're they're shown favorably upon it. But I, I believe a lot of, of what Megan said, um, and the 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 comment about her child, <laughs> like skip whether they'll be too dark. And like Jessica said, like <laughs> what, what color you think he's going to be? Um, wow, I mean that's. That's Maybe crazy. My two minutes are up, so I can chime in. No. But like mother, father, usually, I mean, kids don't usually deviate too far from the color of their mother yeah. and father. So, I, uh, you know, it's it's unfortunate. Um, and um, I don't know. I think they just wanted to tell their side of the story, you know, because I know a lot of people are like, well, they didn't get paid for it. Like, what's the point of putting it out and maybe there is some sort of calculation like you said chess pieces but i think honestly they just wanted to finally just air their side i mean if you if you look at how much of their their life was um put out or 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 interpretations or distortions of their life was put out in tabloids and in newspapers and things 
Like, I think most people would want an opportunity to just set the record straight mm -hmm. and then tell it from, from their side of the story. So um, 17 million people watched it. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of people. That's um, just here. Yeah, and I don't even know what the... What the 11 what the, million. In the the so, I mean, that's a lot of people who, who watched it. Um, so it'd be interesting to see the, the fallout um, and, and where things go from here. But um, speaking of... Uh, you know, believing women, um, you'll notice that uh, Piers Morgan, I think you heard that Piers uh, was either let go or or, or, or stepped down from, from his post on, on his, his TV show um, because he said he didn't believe Megan when she said she was suicidal. And I guess he has some, some beef with her that uh, stems from her not being attracted to him or he's, not. He's... <laughs> Sorry, let me stop. Yeah, I I don't know. Apparently, she just wasn't very fond of him. Um, so he's just like holding trash. that against her. Yeah, he's just her holding that against her because English um, people are mean. Yeah, but suicide is is not something that I think it's not something to uh to to play around with mm -hmm. in terms of saying like oh I'm suicide. Like I I don't, I don't know a lot of people that would kind of just put that out there. Um. So yeah, it's just kind of it's kind of unfortunate how she's kind of been treated. Um, by certain media members who are calling her her interview a performance, so um, that's unfortunate. But along with that, uh, in terms of believing women, the uh, governor of your home state, my birth state, <laughs> your home state, um, has been has come under fire here recently, <gasps> Governor Cuomo. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, he needs to step down. Really? He, he needs you to think resign. So? Yeah. Okay, first of uh, all... No, 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 no. Because, uh, you know, I, I do not identify as a liberal, but a lot of my friends and family members are liberal. Um, and I know they were after Trump for years on, you know, on the accusations of sexual harassment. Um, and, you know, this is not something, you know, Weinstein, you know, they, they got him up out of here. Um, even uh, even Epstein with you know with with all the all the crap he had going on, um, we have to be we as people and and liberals as as a base have to be able to hold their own um, to the same standards that they want to hold everybody else. Yes, the investigation can play out, and that is to determine whether or not there need to be criminal charges. Um, but in the terms of public opinion, and in the, and, and in terms of uh, citizens. Uh, constituents of New York, and of course we don't live there, but I'm just saying I think he should step down, and I don't think that, um, I don't think that it's jumping the gun at all. I think it's, I think even the even the one photo where he had the hand on, on the girl's, uh, on the woman, young woman, excuse me, cheeks, like it's just, it's, I can't like, I don't know, the I like you just you just, you, you can't do that. <laughs> Like this is unacceptable, and and if you listen to a lot of the responses he's given, it's like, oh, I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily. Um, there there are a couple of reports that he's been like, nah, that ain't happened. But there there were some. I think the picture in question that I just referenced, where he was like, oh, I did not realize. Mm. Mm. So I think he can. I I think he needs to step down. I think he needs to go and. Um, you know that, and not even mentioning like all the, the 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 senior facility COVID stuff um, that oh, yeah. that he that he hit. Like he, he should probably step down for that alone. Um, but that in tandem with this, he should just go. So surprisingly, I don't think he should resign at this time. I support fully an, Wrong. <laughs> an investigation. Um, I think an investigation needs to happen. I do think where one as a nation we are COVID wise and where New York is COVID wise, um, less the senior center issue, um, reporting with COVID. I do think that and don't say less like that's not significant. No, it is. It definitely is significant. I, I won't deny that I'm not as well versed in terms of my knowledge of that. The little that I do know, they, they skewed the numbers because they didn't trust the Trump administration to, not like infiltrate or try and take over or whatever. Um, 
I'm not condoning that in any way. I think a proper investigation needs to go through with this. I am a low-key conspiracy theorist. So there is a part of me that thinks the timing of this is very convenient. Um, I do think that now that Trump is out of office, Ivanka and her, her dude Jared have had a taste of politics. I think there's interest in getting turning the state of New York red. And I think there is interest in getting Cuomo's seat, the his governor's seat. Um, and it's definitely a tricky thing for me to say as a woman because women are supposed to support other women. Um, but I'm very sensitive to the optics and the timing of these allegations. I won't deny that Cuomo is to me is an uncomfortable white man. He's not a like, and, and I don't know that a lot of women have been around. Un, I think a lot of women have been around uncomfortable men in general and then uncomfortable white men. Like you can kind of look at a man and be like, mm, this is not a man I want to be alone in a room with. I don't want to, you know, sit next to him if I don't have to. That's Cuomo to me, like something about his brother. I could rock with his brother. Um, but Governor Cuomo, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be next to him. I don't want to sit next to him. Um, he does come off as uncomfortable. He does come off as you know. I've been. I've. I've had to deal with the white man who's just like, like everything they're saying. They have to you know tap you and rub you, and it's like, dude, you can emphasize your point without doing all of this uncomfortable touch. Like you don't need to touch me to to make your point. Cuomo comes off as that white man where he's like, I'm just going to like keep the like, like, good job and I appreciate your effort and thank you for being a part of the t Oh, you're working out? Like he just seems like that, that type of, of white man. Not condoning that, that's not okay. Um, pre me too, post me too, in me too, like that's not okay to make someone uncomfortable. And I think he acknowledges that he makes people uncomfortable. But I think where I stand- you know, Anytime you make a statement like that, like not condoning, and then you- transition with the butt it kind of no one avoids everything you've said before the butt just wanted not to drop that in there condoning making people uncomfortable i think he i think i, mean, I, he, I, I think I, I appreciate that you took a pause instead I did. of saying but that's clever i think he recognizes that he did do wrong there is a part of me that is traumatized by american history in terms of accusations that are made by some women that are later come to come out as not true and that's very hard for me because as a woman i want to believe everything another woman says i don't want to believe that a woman would manipulate or anyone would manipulate any type of accusation of sexual misconduct um so i do think it's absolutely necessary an investigation happen and is completed and if you look at it from things that have taken place from the republican side um we always emphasize that when things happen on the democratic side it's very hang him let him go cut him off we did it to al franken um we're doing it to cuomo we've done it to many others but I do think it's important for us to remember that on the Republican side, they are very much so prove it, prove it, prove it. Oh, you have evidence? Well, get us evidence you, for your evidence. Did you think Trump should have stepped down when all the allegations came out against him? I did, and he didn't. And people stood behind But him. if you think he, he should have stepped down, what's the difference between him and Cuomo? Did an investigation happen for Trump? There's so much happening with him, I can't keep up. What's the, what difference does it make? I think if you it, think he should have stepped down, I, what, well, no, 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 if no. you don't know that there is an Actually, investigation I, I and you think, that back. And you, no, you can't take it back. There's no back season. I can't. No, what I, well, you know, we have, Wrong. anyway, I, th I always think an investigation is necessary. Let me, let me emphasize that. An investigation. There can is, be, you can still have an investigation. And be governor. Like whether he step whether he steps down or not, the investigation is going to mm -hmm. happen regardless. But I, I just think when you talk about public trust, mm -hmm. like the citizens of New York, the last poll voted, I saw, like it was more than fifty percent that said he's still say stay governor. Well, that's because it's a democratic state. I just don't think this the where we are. I think we need to be. I think we need to be. New York, I it, they can ha They should. They should have to also deal not, with. There's so much about politics, like it's not like it's not Cuomo in there, like 
directing 85 million people. Like he has people around him. There are people mm-hmm. in positions. So it, you could have somebody, a, a lieutenant governor step in and yeah. it would, it, I don't I know, know that. that it would necessarily be, it, it would probably be fine. Um, my thing is consistency. So if you're going to say, you know, we believe women, women need to be believed. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're calling for Trump's head, uh, you're calling for, you know, anyone else's head when, when, when these allegations come out, you need to be consistent. Now, what I think what the issue is, is that we're at a point where Democrats have taken, you know, they have to take majority in the Senate. You know, they lost a little bit of majority in the House. They're a little nervous about 2022. Um, and I think people don't want to, they're, I think they're worried about the effect that it could have on the party um, in an important state. But what, what, I, what I've heard and what I've read has not made me very, uh, com- it's made me uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I just think being consistent, you just need to step down. And I, I just think, I, I just that, think it, it's 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 balance, and g- it's almost as if when it's demo- on the Democratic side, everything needs to be instantaneous. Whereas Republic, and you've said this many times, where it, it, it when it comes to Republicans, it's they're great when it, it it's just fall in line. This is what's happening. Fall in line. I'm not condoning someone who is sexually assaulting people, bullying, making someone uncomfortable. Uh, being reelected. I do think he's he's currently in this role and it could cause a an uncomfortable rippling shift if we choose to or if they choose or if they force him to resign right now. I do think the proper protocol right. is to is to follow like let's investigate, let's get all of the details. But when it comes to the Republican side, like if this was a Republican issue, if this was Lindsey Graham, if this was dude from Texas, if there this was who else? Who else? Who else is Republican? Give me somebody. Anybody? Anybody? Who? Okay. Anyway. Cruz. That's the best you could do. Um. You know they're gonna burn him to the stake. Mitt Romney. No, he's not. He's too. He's Mormon. He's too good. <laughs> like he's he not gonna get in them situations. They would. They would defend and protect. Defend and protect, and they would, they would, they would argue that we need to do an invest. We need to do the proper but, channel. So I don't see it why doesn't, it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. I just don't a see why when thing. it comes to. It, but everything is like we always say. This needs to be bipartisan. No, no, everything no, is no, partisan. No, when it comes because to because we had a president no, who is on camera no, talking about sexually assaulting women. Exactly, and people and, and people said he needed voted and for people, him, and they still. But the and people Democrats, said he needed to go. But they still. But there were still people who said, "I'm not." It's it's just so. It's so fine. I I I I think an investigation needs to. How how am I? I don't how know. How am I, I the know, one? And I'm probably gonna get a. Lo- I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this. I as know you, it. As you should, probably I'm gonna should. Get women say, "Oh, you need to support women," and I I do support women. I also support like we can't say that we have this justice system that's fair to everybody who's not black, um, and not enforce it in this situation the, and i just think that there could be a ripple okay, effect okay. if we take this approach as opposed to like anytime someone gets an accusation against them if they just resign then all we have to do is just accuse people of things it's not just one accusation though. i know i know so we can just get a bunch of people to no I'm you have to look at anyone's line i'm just saying wow. In the future, you if you want somebody, say you've got someone ready to fill in a governor's seat or a Senate seat, if you can just coerce people to say that this happened, you've been around them, whatever. There is a photo of him with both hands on a woman's some, face. And I'm not condoning, but I still think that so there needs to So you can't just say, be, oh, just conjure up a, a fake uh, sexual assault story. Like that's, that's, that's different than having actual photographic evidence. So if you see, if you see the picture of him... Then it's not that far. It's not that big of a leap to think that okay, maybe these other stories have some merit. Okay, like I'm not the, the, investi- don't have the investigation merit. can still happen whether he's governor or not. People have trials and investigations happen every day. B, whether it's a governor, really? whether, whether it's a governor or not. Are you referring to me? Yeah, you the only one in the room, aren't you? That was my. We were talking about a New York governor. I used my New York slang. B, maybe talking to the Holy Spirit. Um, <laughs> 
uh, I, I just, I, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's, you know, I, just, I just think it's kind of problematic. But um, I think he should go. And I think that that's. I'm not saying he should be reelected. I'm not saying he should run for governor again. I'm just saying he's already in his term, and what, the investigation. And even by even Joe, even Joe is with me. Even Chuck Joe Schumer, has said Chuck Schumer said he need to go. Well, Chuck is from New York. Chuck is trying to protect his state, and Chuck Chuck, it's chess. It's maybe it's everything just people. Maybe maybe it's just people saying this is wrong, and he needs to go. I'm not saying it's not wrong. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. We need an investigation I'm just, saying, just, to, just to make sure it's wrong. We, we don't have to, we have have to be extra, extra sure it's wrong. We have a wrong problem. <laughs> we have a justice investigation problem. I'm just oh, saying wow. we need to enforce. Okay. We need to move on. The law, not, the, the law of circles. the land. All right. So that is rushed vibes. Whew. We are done. Y'all, I support women. I just want you to know. Yeah, she does. She's just a little confused. Maybe y'all should uh, drop some comments and, and help, help, help enlighten Jessica so and that she you, can understand. I, actually, I do appreciate it. And maybe I need to wrongs, do a little more research. The wrongs of her ways. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to listen to a lot of NPR. Um, I just know, I just feel that if it were a Republican governor, don't matter. there would be a different approach. It, it doesn't it don't matter. matter. No, it, it doesn't matter. matter in the capacity don't of matter. no one should be assaulted and not have justice. But in the capacity of... It doesn't... How this how we've shown in the last four years and beyond that we can run this country and not make rash decisions. It's not a rash decision. I, I It's been going on for weeks. I just think that if it was a Republican governor, Lindsey and all of those other people, Ted Cruz would they would they would that they would emphasize it, that doesn't make it I'm right. I'm just saying it's tit for tit. Like we need to play this. We need to no. balance the equation. No. And what we would do for one, we need to do for another. Exactly. So if the Republicans so if you are call, going if you to call insist, for certain people to step down when they've been accused of sexual harassment, a la Trump, then you need to do the same thing when it's a Democratic governor. I mean, I just didn't like Trump, so I just wanted him to go. Like, it didn't really didn't matter what he did. Like, him, right. him waking up in the morning so, um, was reason for me so to this, think he should step down. Do I need to do it? No. All right. So that's it. We're done because we're we're at the point where we're just going in circles, and this will probably continue after we cut the camera. But um, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We know this was a little heavy. Uh, this is kind of the the this a double edged sword because we don't always talk about. Like we'll 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 tell each other topics that we want to discuss, but we don't always discuss our viewpoints because we want everything to be authentic uh, and and you know and natural in front of the camera. So uh, we didn't necessarily expect for this to, to hit this heavy, but you know I'm I'm glad it did, and um, you know hopefully some people watching this got a little uncomfortable because uh, that's what we need, especially in the, the earlier segments. We can't get so, comfortable um, until we've embraced our uncomfortability. So, uh, if you haven't already and you're still watching, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. New episodes every Wednesday. Go ahead hit that like button too. We really appreciate you and jump down in the comments. We we love to uh, go back and forth with you guys. Um, like us on Facebook, Rushed Vibes. Instagram, Rushed Vibes. <laughs> connect with us. Connect with us there. And you can also support the channel if you feel led to at uh, over on Cash App. Um, R U S H D V I B E S. We will be back with another Mompreneur episode. Next week, it'll actually be our last one. Um, we thought we were going to have four, but we just we settled on three. So, uh, but really, really lovely. Um, mompreneur we have coming on. She's, uh, she's near, awesome. near and dear to our heart uh, as, as she has uh, shown us support in numerous amount of ways um, throughout the length of time that we've known her. Um, and she's just fantastic. She's a treat. We can't wait to have her on so she can share her story with you guys and then also share how she's kind of, you know, killing it in the business world. So, Look for that episode next Wednesday. Um, hopefully, uh, nothing happens um, in terms of anything that we've talked about <laughs> today. Like, hopefully, hopefully, Como doesn't resign <laughs> before before this episode comes out. Or no more allegations out. pop or up. Or no more allegations pop up because we're recording this on um, let's say Saturday. On Saturday, uh, of course, our episodes launch on Monday or a drop on Wednesday. So um, hopefully, but if so, you know, oh well, you still get our thoughts on everything. Yeah. That's it. All right. Well, we're gonna let J Bell take us out. Um 
vaccines are rolling out. So if you've gotten one dose or both doses, congratulations. But if not, it's still a pandemic. So social distance, wear a mask, wash your hands, be safe. This is Rush Vibes. We're out. We'll catch you guys next week. Be good. Yeah, I done came way too far to stop me now